of the Aston Martin DBS Volante, the V12 uh, Grand Tour. This car is going to be completely different and I've heard and seen loads of reviews saying how much of a hardcore supercar this is. The engine's running and it feels actually quite quiet but I know that once the valves open up after three and a half thousand RPM it's going to sound really really brutal and it's also going to give you a proper kickback. Like I said I've been in a lot of passenger rides in these and um, I've got to know the Gallardo very well just not behind the driver's seat unfortunately um, but today it's all going to change and I'm going to find out how fun it is to drive. This is an e-gear one so it's not manual like my Audi R8 so uh, the video that I'm going to be filming is going to be comparing it to the Aston Martin DBS but also to the Audi R8 and maybe even the Fiat 500 the 0.9 because after all they're both Italian. Jump in and check out what it's like inside getting in the Lamborghini. Oh, oh this is low and it's a lot lower than um, just going to shut the door because like I said with all supercars they love beeping noises and warnings and inside this is very familiar this is actually the same setup as my Audi R8 so you get to see what it's like to have the Lamborghini and the Audi partnership you get a fantastic view of the rear of this car in the wing mirrors and um, I'm really excited and very very nervous to drive this car because this car is just a true supercar. The Audi R8, the reason I bought it for my first supercar was that it's not exactly a true 2014-2015 uh, supercar. The performance is manageable whereas this car's got 560 brake horsepower, it's still got the four wheel system but again 70 to the rear, 30 to the front, the same as my Audi but it's got so much more brake horsepower and it is a real real supercar so I can't wait to get into this car, well I'm already in it actually but I can't wait to get behind the wheel, I'm already behind the wheel I can't wait to drive this car, that's just as simple as it is and I tell you what, you just get all round, you get a fantastic view and maybe I'll be swung to get a spider after driving this but um, I'm excited to drive a Lamborghini on the road for the first time. So we're on to the first few metres of driving the Lamborghini and I already feel like it's, well it is a completely different car to the Aston Martin, the Audi, and anything I've driven, you get to hear a lot more. You're so much lower to the ground, um, and you do feel like you're in something a lot more special. I think the Aston Martin we felt a lot more luxurious than uh, most of the cars that I've driven. Um, but there's just something about this car. And I know that I'm a Lamborghini fan, so I'm gonna be biased, but it is really cool. The pedals aren't in the middle um, which can be quite confusing um, putting your foot on the brake or the accelerator and as we cruise off from first gear you're low to the ground the wing mirrors are the same height as your eye level which is quite similar to uh, my Audi R8 and um, the e-gear is completely different to the automatic that you get in the Aston Martin and also the manual that you have in the Audi R8, so you put your foot on the brake, you put the paddle up, and you'll change it to first gear. When you take your foot off the brake, you immediately can put your foot on the accelerator and you'll move away, but the um, the way that the pedal, is, there doesn't seem to be a sponginess to the accelerator like there was in the Aston Martin, and already the suspension is completely different in this car than it is to the Aston Martin. It's set up, uh, well, it feels like it's set up for the racetrack. It's a lot harder, than my Audi R8 and uh, anything that I've ever driven before and I knew that this car was going to be um, quite harsh. It's a really small car even though it feels um, quite wide and manoeuvring yourself around country lanes is quite nerve-wracking. Single clutch gearbox. So the first acceleration, I'm getting used to the uh, e-gear transmission, which is manual. It's pretty much the same as the uh, the Ferraris, not the uh, 458 or anything like that. Pretty similar to the 430. You can almost feel 
the gear change is working behind you, which is so uh, Italian and so Lamborghini, um, to get you to feel everything that you're driving. And that is one thing, my first impressions, you do feel everything that you're driving this car. You feel every bump, you feel every gear change, and you definitely feel when you put your foot down. The cool thing about driving this car is this exact road that I'm about to go on was the first road that I ever had a ride in a Lamborghini. It was a green LP560. And this stretch of road is bringing back um, a lot of memories of the first time that I ever went out in the LP560, the fastest car that I'd ever been out in. And now, six years on, I'm driving one down the same stretch of road, which is absolutely an incredible experience. I haven't even been driving this car five minutes, but I already like playing with the playing with the valves as it reaches three and a half thousand RPM. And I knew that from back in the Top Gear days when Jeremy Clarkson had the first, the Mark I Gallardo Spider. What's really cool about this car is even though it's um, in manual mode, it is going down the gears, like the Aston Martin did um, as well. Even if you've got it in the paddle mode. It does go down the gears by itself when you're braking, which is fantastic um, when it's one thing that you don't want to be thinking about is going down the gears and you're just worrying about um, heading towards that red light. And the handling is a... There's that incredible V10 soundtrack to it and it's just... It's brilliant. But I'm having to talk up compared to like that in the uh, V12 DBS. Because, like I mentioned, one of the first things that I noticed driving this car is how loud everything is inside, which is a fantastic thing. It really makes you connected to driving rather than in the Aston Martin. Like I said, you feel like you're getting driven around by a chauffeur, but you're the one that's in control of it, which is a quite a weird sensation. Um, and I'm sure that there's lots of cars out there that do it, like the Bentleys and all of the other cars that are tailored towards the luxury high end market. But the Lamborghini is a true hardcore supercar. Um, which I could definitely, definitely see myself getting used to driving. Checking back in, I've been able to drive the uh, Lamborghini for slightly longer than the DBS, and we're actually coming up to uh, quite a famous tunnel that has appeared quite a few times on Supercars of London videos. We're going through the Hatfield Tunnel, um, and we are taking this car through the Hatfield Tunnel with me behind the wheel. Now, the last time that I did it, I was in my Army Tricks Audi R8. is completely different and in this car because it's the spider we've been able to um, open up the rear teaser of the awesome V10 soundtrack. Like I said, I'm not going to go crazy in this car because it's all about just getting to grips with it, learning about the car and not doing anything stupid, which um, sounds sensible, but when you're in a Lamborghini, you need that sensible head on you because this car is completely ludicrous um, and it is definitely important, um, especially driving a car that I've never driven before or even uh, power that I've ever experienced on my right foot. So um, definitely uh, just holding back slightly. And I, I hope that you guys can understand as well. It's just about enjoying the experience of what this Lamborghini is like. And it is absolutely fantastic. Love this car. I'm scared of this car. It's definitely, um, definitely a scary factor towards this car. As opposed to the DBS, the DBS I felt like I could just drive it um, and just cruise around, whereas this car it definitely serves a purpose of being a proper supercar. Comparing this to the Audi R8, I mean this is just so much faster, so much more hardcore, and I mean it's just a proper supercar, so I do understand why people question whether the Audi R8, the V8 one, is a supercar. 
Supercar experiences have just got this car on the fleet, so I'm one of the lucky few to be able to get behind the wheel. Um, but definitely, if you can get the chance to drive in this car, I feel like I'm doing a, a plug, but this Lamborghini is absolutely sensational and definitely um, take up the offer or the opportunity if you get it to drive this car. But thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'm really looking forward to doing more videos with the supercar experiences. All of the details, like in the last video, are going to be in this description for you guys to check out so you can see more of the fleet. Head over to their website and, uh, and comment below on what car you want me to see driving next um, after the Lamborghini and the Aston Martin DBS. So um, thanks for watching, make sure that you subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.